Discernment of name and form, Nama Narupa, the principle. Sit and relax. The body is sitting and the mind is aware. The body is inhaling and exhaling and the mind is aware. Don't control or focus intensely. If the mind wanders, let it be. If it wanders often, then know that often and bring it back to the base. The more frequently we observe a wandering mind, the more awakened the mind will become. As we continue watching and being aware of mental states and phenomena, mindfulness will spontaneously arise and become objective observation, right concentration. If the mind is weak and wavering, be aware. Increase your effort and bring it back to the base. Use one of the primary objects of meditation as your base. Don't control and don't over-concentrate. Just relax and observe when the mind strays and bring it back to the base. We need to be patient, persistent, and diligent to succeed. Mindfulness can be practiced at any time. While the body is working for a living, the mind is aware of bodily movements and is mindful of wholesome or unwholesome thoughts that arise. Keep bringing mindfulness back to the body that is walking or sitting, and mindfulness will arise more frequently. Practice often every day and whenever sensations arise and impact the mind to wander off. As the mind is cultivated, it spontaneously becomes more stable. Then right concentration, samadhi, arises. This reflects a high quality of mind which is tranquil, light, gentle, quick, and serene without unwholesomeness or distraction. When the mind is objectively observing at the base, there is no self. Then, when an external object comes into contact with the eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, or mind, the mind objectively observes and sees cause and effect, contact, and then the impact causing the mind to think, followed by liking or disliking, and then craving and clinging. When a thought arises, the mind objectively observes and contemplates the rise and fall of the thought. Mindfulness is, therefore, cultivated by persistently and diligently practicing watching the mind that strays from the base and always bringing it back until the mind becomes stable and objectively observes. Then the mind can separate the mind from the body and phenomena, and we will see the truth that all phenomena are arising existing and disappearing. Vipassana practice focuses solely on the mind in pursuit of the Noble Eightfold Path, Maga. All the components of the Noble Eightfold Path are working while we watch the mind. The division of concentration, which consists of right effort, right mindfulness, and right concentration, is mastered when the mind is objectively observing at the base. We choose one object of meditation when practicing and make right effort, samavayama, to relax and observe the mind that wanders off. Every time the mind wanders, just know it and bring it persistently back to the base until mindfulness spontaneously arises. We then become mindful of it, which is right mindfulness. When the mind is stable, objectively observing and arising spontaneously at the base, right concentration has been attained. In other words, the mind that is objectively observing is the mind that has right concentration. Without right view, however, practicing to cultivate right concentration cannot be done correctly. Right view is the right understanding of how to practice directly to Nibbana and watching the mind and observing when thoughts arise in pursuit of right thought. Objectively observe desire, aversion, or ignorance as they arise to see the three marks of existence, <clears throat> wisdom, and cultivate right speech, right action, and right livelihood. To cultivate right thought, watch the mind and refrain from harsh, slanderous, false, and purposeless speech. We adhere to right action by following the first three precepts refraining from killing, stealing, and sexual misconduct, and pursue right livelihood by avoiding occupations that are harmful to others. When we are objectively observing and watching the mind, 
we are able to separate the mind from body and phenomena. Only through hard work and persistent effort will we successfully cultivate the Eightfold Noble Path. We are not talking about tranquility achieved through concentration here, but rather through right concentration. Desire, unwholesomeness, and wholesomeness still arise, but cannot affect the mind because it is objectively observing at the base and seeing that all objects are arising, existing, and disappearing. As a result, the mind is detached and free from objects, phenomena. Then the sixth sense doors and the mind will separate from each other there and will just be no self in contact causing mental states to arise. Then the mind will see thoughts are arising and disappearing. The mind always works even when the body is at rest. It should be neither lost nor intensely focused, but at every single mind moment, it should be aware of the body that is inhaling and exhaling. Practice this mindfulness until it arises spontaneously and morality, concentration, and wisdom will automatically be attained. Mindfulness will work by itself even when we are drowsy or lazy. When facing chaos or experiencing extreme sleepiness or boredom, mindfulness is critical to provide strength for the five spiritual faculties, faith, effort, mindfulness, concentration, and wisdom, so they can overcome these difficulties. Today we are learning how to separate body from mind. The objective is to lay the foundation for the practice of Vipassana. When we are happy, sad, greedy, angry, ignorant, or facing a chaotic moment, the mind simply knows and remains objectively observing at the base, detached from sense objects in contact with the eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind. There is no self when contact is made. When seeing something, the mind is simply aware that the eyes, not ourself, see the object. When thinking, the mind is aware of the thought, but does not become immersed in that thought. When the mind is objectively observing, the knower mind is detached from the object and form, rupa or body, and name, nama, are perceived to be distinct from each other. The object, therefore, falls under the three marks of existence. The knower mind that we are cultivating is very important because it can liberate us from suffering, dukkha. When contact is made, if the mind is objectively observing emerging feelings, such as happiness, sorrow, desire, aversion, or ignorance, they will just arise and disappear due to the law of impermanence. However, in the absence of the knower mind, the apparent self will try to control or change impermanence to be permanence, unsatisfactoriness to be satisfactoriness, and no self to be self, and the result will be suffering. Following the Buddha's teaching, objectively observing mind or knower mind understands the law of nature. Under this law, all phenomena are impermanent, unsatisfactory, and no self. Set your goal for today to be mindful of the body and mind and that they are separate. When you succeed, you will no longer be affected by happiness and sorrow. When we feel pain, for example, the mind will objectively observe and differentiate the pain from the body and the mind's reaction to the pain as distinct entities without a self, no self. When the mind is objectively observing, nor mind, it is able to observe as many as thousands of objects that arise in the mind. It is aware of the base, the body, the pain, and the mind that is tainted with defilements and cravings. At the moment of knowing, everything becomes separate. There is no self to be found. Whether the phenomenon lasts long or not, the three marks of existence, impermanence, suffering, and no self, will manifest. We will see its true nature. Keep practicing this way and be persistent. When we are angry with someone and focus on that person, perception, feeling, and mental formation will arise. But if we watch the anger itself rising, existing, and being no self, it will suddenly cease and then be followed by loving kindness and empathy. 
The other person is a human being too. He has his own suffering and wants to be free from it. We can empathize with him and be kind to him and ourselves. The mind will then return to the base. Try to distinguish body, rupa or form, from mind, nama or name. The difference is evident when the mind is objectively observing at the base. The mind knows the body that is walking or sitting and eventually understands that this body is not ours. When we frequently contemplate the body and its movement, we will see it as a robot walking and sitting instead of us walking and sitting. The body is just a heap and aggregate. It is not our self. Then frequently be aware of thoughts that arise and watch them come and go until you realize that mental states are not ours. Being able to arrive, arrive at this realization is excellent. To watch the mind, a person whose concentration has led to wisdom, should watch the bodily movements and any feelings that arise and fall together with consciousness. We will then perceive that the body does not belong to us and neither do its sensations. Unsatisfactoriness caused by the body or sensations will have no control over the mind. Practice watching the mind frequently until you realize phenomena are temporary and no self. Where knower mind is one thing that functions by itself and thought is another. Unpleasant feelings will no longer control us. As we watch the body, sensations, mind, and dhamma phenomena, and are aware of the phenomena that arise, the mind will become completely impartial and free from suffering. However, success can only be achieved by persistent practice to keep the mind from being controlled by mental phenomena that come and go. Eventually, the mind will gain enough wisdom to see the truth. When desire, aversion, or ignorance arise, watch the mental state to see how the mind reacts. Whether it likes or dislikes, is happy or sad, gets angry or stressed, or craves for something. Before taking any physical, verbal, or mental action, look at your current mental state to clearly differentiate between body, rupa or form, and mind, nama or name. Practice often until the mind becomes virtuous and you will have more freedom. Life is made up of mind moments that arise, exist, and disappear, and it is short and always ready to pass away. Each day is also short. We have seen our friends, brothers, sisters, and relatives passing away, and our turn may be next. Nothing is permanent in this world. The body that used to be strong has become weak. The mind that used to be happy is now afflicted with suffering. Therefore, we need to prepare. Don't get lost in material things that always try to fool us. Even the body and the mind tell us that they belong to us, that they are ours. Once we attach to them, we suffer because we expect them to stay the same. But the fact is that there is no, neither us nor ourself. Continue to differentiate between body, rupa, or form, and mind, nama, or name, to see that there is no self. When the six sense doors come in contact with phenomena, there is no self because the mind is objectively observing at the base. When contact causes mental states to arise, there is no self, just phenomena that arise and disappear. If the mind is spontaneously at the base and aware of the body and phenomena, at that moment everything is separate and no self. Without attachment, phenomena will arise and disappear and the mind will become free. When we are dying, we don't have to end up in the abyss if we are awake. Cultivating wisdom changes our lives for the better. It enables us to differentiate between good and evil. When someone makes us upset, we have the mindfulness to see our desire to talk back. A true practitioner must be able to be calm and collected, refraining from committing bad deeds and unwholesome acts that are harmful to himself and others. Sometimes we just want to engage in a sharp verbal exchange simply to satisfy our desire. When we act on our emotions, we simply ignore the fact that our action is hurting others. 
Only mindfulness and wisdom enable us to be logical and to express ourselves in a more gentle and loving way. We can be more calm and collected, but it will only be possible if we practice. We accumulate merit and refrain from bad deeds when we are aware of the emergence of a non-virtuous state and the mind does not become absorbed in that state. This increases wholesomeness because mindfulness, concentration, and wisdom arise at the same time and the mind becomes pure and virtuous. This is the way that must be pursued persistently. So now let's see. Who is sitting, the body or us? When we are lost in thought, the sense of self arises as we sit, drifting, muddling about, scolding someone or having someone scold us. But when we practice mindfulness, we see the mind or the knower mind as being distinct from the thought or object. The more we practice, the better we can make this distinction. Practice frequently until it becomes automatic. Now our practice is good, but it may get worse later because of being absent-minded. If that happens, just start over. Relax and be aware of the body sitting, inhaling, and exhaling. Anumodana, sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.